Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and welcome back to my Linux Essentials series. For those of you that are new, in this series I go over Linux commands in short videos to teach you guys the basics of that command. Each episode is completely standalone. You don't have to watch every episode in this series. There's no set number of episodes and no set cadence. Anytime I want to teach you guys the basics of a Linux command, I do so in this series. In particular, in today's video, I am going to teach you all about the Pacman command. Pacman is the official package manager for Arch Linux and distributions that are based on Arch Linux, and we're going to take a look at it today, so let's get started. Like many package managers in Linux, Pacman fetches packages from repositories, which are online servers that store available packages that you can install. So you could basically think of a repository as an online source from which you can obtain software. On your local system, you'll have an index that's kind of like a cache that stores information about all the packages that are available on the repository servers that you've subscribed to. Every now and then, it's a good idea to refresh that cache. So before we get started with the pacman command, that's the first thing that we should do. So to do that, you could run pacman dash capital S and then YY. The capital S option we will be using quite a bit. That is the sync option, more on that later. And then we pass a couple of Ys to that as well. And the first Y will cause it to refresh the package database, which is exactly what we want to do. And adding a second Y will definitely force it to refresh the local database cache, even if it thinks that it's already up to date. It basically just forces the operation so essentially what we're telling Pacman to do is refresh the package database no matter what. Now in my case, I am not logged in as root, so I will need to use sudo to run this command. So if you are logged in as root, then obviously you won't need to use sudo, but I'm going to in my case. So I'll press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. And that was pretty fast. So Pacman went ahead and did a complete refresh and synchronized with the repository servers. We can see the core, extra, and community repositories here, the main three. So we should be good to go. Now, to be fair, I didn't need to synchronize, but it doesn't hurt to do so. It can help avoid errors where Pacman is unable to find a package in a situation in which your local index is stale. And one symptom of a stale index is that it might say that a package is unavailable even though you are sure it is available. In that case, you definitely need to refresh your index. Now, an obvious question at this point is, which servers in particular is Pacman trying to connect to? What is it actually synchronizing with? So what we can do is view this particular file. I'll just use the cat command. And the file is located at etsy pacman.d. And then inside that directory, we have a file simply called mirror list. I'll press enter. And it's quite a large file. As you can see, there's quite a few servers here on this list. When you're using the pacman command and you attempt to do any operation that requires synchronization, such as recreating the repository index or installing a package from a repository, it's going to try the topmost server and then work its way down. And you can actually customize this mirror list to make it work even faster, which we will explore toward the end of the video. But for now, if you are curious where Pacman is actually grabbing things from, well, now you know. Anyway, we now know where Pacman is grabbing packages from, and we also know how to update the cache as well. So how do you actually install a package with Pacman? Well, that's easy. For example, let's say I want to install HTOP, which is a great tool for monitoring the system resources on your Linux rig. As of right now, the htop command is not available on this system. And I definitely want to install htop because, well, it's awesome. So to get that installed, I will run this command. So the syntax for installing packages is basically pacman 
dash capital S for synchronize, and then the name of the package that you want to install. In my case, htop. So I'll simply press enter. I'll type in the password. And here it's giving me a summary of what's going to happen if I were to continue. In this case, only one package will be installed. But if the package that you want to install requires other packages, basically dependencies, then Pac-Man is going to add those to the list as well automatically. So that way you don't have to manually take care of dependencies, which is really great. At the end, it's asking us if we want to continue. We could type Y for yes or N for no, and the Y is capital. So if I press enter without typing anything, it's going to assume that I do want to continue. If I wanted to abort the process, I would just type N and then enter, but I'll continue. And there you go. It's already installed, actually. It was that fast. So now I could type HTOP. And as you can see, the command is now available. And I have the font size very, very large in my terminal right now, so you are not seeing a ton of detail here. But HTOP is awesome, and I highly recommend that you install it. So I just held Control and I pressed C to close out of HTOP. But anyway, let's continue. Now you might be wondering, how do I remove a package I no longer want to have installed on my system? And that's easy because the command syntax for Pac-Man only changes by one character if you want to remove something rather than install it. So there's the command that we use to install HTOP. And what I will do is change the capital S to a capital R. R is for remove, as you could probably guess. So I'll press enter, and it's going to give me a summary of what it wants to do. And at the end there, it's asking me if I do in fact want to remove HTOP. I'll press enter to assume yes. And now, just like you'd expect, HTOP is gone. Now, I had an unfair advantage with the HTOP package because I already knew what the package name was before I went and installed it. And if you already know the name of the package that you want to install before you install it, then that makes the entire process very easy. But what if I didn't know the name of the package already? How do I find out what the package name is that I need to use to get something installed? And I'll give you an example. Let's say that I wanted to install Pygame, which is a package that you can install to facilitate the creation of computer games. Pygame is a lot of fun. So you might assume that you would run pacman-s and then pygame, just like that. But the package is not found. It's telling me that pygame is not available on Arch Linux. Well, actually, it is available. I've used it before. I know that it's available. So what's probably the case is that the package is not named pygame. It has a very specific name that I'll need to use, and I'll need to find what that name is in order for me to be able to install this package. So, what I'm going to do is show you two different methods that you can use to find out what the name of a package is before you go to install it. So, method number one, we could go to a browser. Now, right here on the Arch Linux website, we actually have a section that we can use to search for packages right here. And inside that search box, you could type the name of a package or a keyword for a package that you think identifies that package to help narrow it down. So, I'll type pygame. And if I scroll down, we get a list of results here for the search query. And in my case, the package that I want to install is actually python pygame. So that explains why I was not able to install pygame by typing pacman-s pygame, because the package name is not simply pygame. At this point, I could go ahead and install pygame now that I know the name of the package. But what I'm going to do instead is show you how to search for packages via the command line, just in case you're in a situation where you don't actually have access to a browser. So to search for packages, I could type pacman dash capital S for sync, and then a lowercase s because I want to search. And then I could type a keyword that I think might narrow down the list of available packages down to what I'm interested in. So I will type pygame for the keyword, and then enter. And here I'm actually getting the same results that I saw on the website. So I can install Pygame with sudo pacman dash capital S, python hyphen pygame, and then enter. 
So as you see here, it automatically detected that there's a dependency. I only asked for one package. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Pac-Man is smart enough to handle dependencies on its own. So it noticed that port MIDI is a requirement of Pygame and it's going to install that as well, which is pretty cool. But anyway, I'll press enter. And there you go. The package is now installed and we're good to go. Now, one thing that I want to call your attention to is that you don't need to run a separate Pac-Man command for each individual package that you want to install. So here I've added the names of three random packages, each separated by a space, htop, tmux, and python pygame. The htop package I went ahead and removed earlier. Python pygame is already installed, and tmux is already installed as well because I make sure that's installed on all of my systems. I have a whole series on tmux if you're interested, but anyway, I'll press enter. Now notice here that it's telling us that tmux and pygame are already installed. And if I'm going to continue with this, it's going to reinstall those packages. But htop is not present on the system already because, well, we removed it. So I'll press enter. And now htop is back. And we were able to install that by running this command right here, where I again installed three packages. So you don't need to run an individual Pac-Man command for each package that you want. You can chain them together just like this. Now over time, it's possible that you may have packages on your system that are no longer required by any other package. Those packages are called orphans, and you could find them by running pacman dash capital Q, lowercase d, lowercase t, just like that. Now I don't need to use sudo for this command because I'm not actually going to make any changes. All that command does is show packages that are not required by other packages on the system basically orphans. So if I don't want to keep those packages installed, if I don't personally have a use for them, then I can go ahead and remove them. So for example, I'll run pacman dash capital R. As we've already seen, the dash capital R is for remove, and I will remove JS68 and lib32lz4. So I don't need those packages, and they are listed as orphans. So I'll press enter to get rid of those. Enter again to confirm. So now if I run this command again, I no longer have any orphans on my system. Cleaning up orphan packages is not something that you have to do, but it's just a good idea because eventually you'll start upgrading your packages, and the more packages you have on your system, the longer a full system upgrade will take. And with that command, the dash capital Q is for query. We want to query the package database. The D option actually skips dependency checks. And then the T option is the magic here. That's the option that's actually going to limit the results to orphaned packages. And that's how that command actually works. So essentially, we are querying the package database for orphans. Now, I just mentioned the concept of a full system upgrade, something that you should actually do reasonably often on an Arch Linux system, but how do you actually do that? So let's explore that. I will run sudo pacman dash capital S for sync, just like always, then a lowercase y, and then a lowercase u. So we've already seen the S and Y options here, but what about the U option? As you could probably guess, the U is for updates and it limits the filter down to packages that are upgradable. So I'll press enter. And as you can see here, I have quite a few packages that are available to be updated. So I'll press enter. And that's going to take a minute, so I will be right back as soon as that's done. And there you go. All the packages on my system are all up to date. And on an Arch Linux system, you definitely don't want it to get stale because if you wait too long to upgrade your system, then you could run into problems. In my opinion, you should definitely never go more than one month without updating, but I would prefer to see everyone upgrade at least every two weeks. That way you could be reasonably sure that your installation will never get stale. I think two weeks is a good common ground. Now, another tip that I want to leave you guys with is how to update the mirror list. This is something that you might have to do periodically. 
And a symptom of this needing to be done is you might run this command like we've done earlier. And it might take a long time for this to finish. Maybe one of the servers that you are subscribed to has actually slowed down, or maybe the topmost server on the list is no longer available. That sometimes happens, in which case you have to actually wait for a 404 or a timeout until it moves on to the next server in the list. So what I'm going to do is show you how to generate a brand new mirror list. And for that, we can actually go back to the browser. So what I'm going to do is go up here in the address bar, and I'll have a link to this in the description down below. But we want to navigate to HTTPS www.archlinux.org and then slash mirror list, all one word. And now we have found our way to the Pac-Man mirror list generator, which is awesome. So I'm going to scroll down a bit here. And to get started, you could go ahead and scroll through this list and find your country. And this will help you limit the results down to your country. I'll choose the United States, and then I will also choose Canada. So I'll hold Control and I'll click on Canada. And now I should have both of those selected. And I do. So I am going to deselect HTTP. That'll help me limit the results down to secure servers. IPv4 is fine. And I want to check this box to use the mirror status. And then I will generate the list. And here we go. So what I'm going to do is just copy a bunch of these. You don't have to actually copy everything here on the page. I think this is actually good enough. So I'm going to copy this here and then go back to the terminal. And then I'm going to go into the Etsy pacman.d directory. As you can see, we have the mirror list file right there. And just in case I make a mistake, I'm going to create a backup of that mirror list. So I will copy mirror list to something like mirrorlist.back. I think that's fine. And then I can use the truncate command to empty out the original mirror list. So truncate dash S for size and then zero. I basically want to truncate the existing mirror list file down to zero bytes which it now is. So I will edit the mirror list with sudo nano mirror list just like that, which of course is empty because, well, I emptied it out. But what I can do is actually paste right here the contents from that website. And then what you wanna do is uncomment at least a few of these. So I'll go up to the top here. And I do like to leave the date here because that's a good reminder of when I last regenerated my mirror list. And I'm going to uncomment several of these here. If you don't uncomment any of these, then none of them will work. So I have uncommented three United States servers, and I will uncomment a few Canada servers as well. Should be good to go. Control O, and then enter. Control X to save the file. And to make the changes take effect, I will run sudo pacman dash capital S Y Y to resynchronize everything yet again. And there you go. Now in my end, I might not notice a single difference here because Pac-Man was already very fast on my system. But if I was actually experiencing some slowdown or errors or anything like that, then maybe this would help clean it up. But no matter what, I do recommend that you regenerate your mirror list every now and then. Every month is fine. Every other month is fine. Whatever makes sense for you. But now that the mirror list has been regenerated, I should be good for a little while. So there you go. Pac-Man is an awesome package manager. It's one of my favorites. And now you know the basics. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. And also subscribe if you haven't already done so because I have some awesome videos coming very soon. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching.